Doximity is a high-growth medtech company that came public last year with little fanfare. That's a shame because this company is a leader in its industry and has huge growth potential. So what does Doximity do? And is its stock worth investing in today? Here's everything you need to know about Doximity. My name is Brian Feraldi. And my name is Brian Stoffel. Thanks to StockCard.io for sponsoring today's video. As of the time of this recording, neither Brian or I own shares of Doximity. Brian, Doximity is about a $9 billion business that trades under the ticker DOCS. This company's mission is to help physicians be more productive and provide better care for their patients. While this is a little bit wordy, I do think this is a mission-driven company. The company provides a platform that aims to connect those in the healthcare industry. Primarily, it could be looked at as a LinkedIn for doctors and physicians, but there are other tools involved that make it similar to DocuSign, Slack, and even Zoom as well. The easiest way to think about this company is it's like the LinkedIn, but specifically for healthcare. So Doximity is a professional networking app that is used by the majority of physicians in the United States. And when those physicians are using the app, they have a news feed akin to what you'd see on Facebook's news feed, except here, the news feed is primarily focused on health news. And the company has a suite of productivity tools that physicians can use, including video chat capabilities and even the ability to sign prescriptions right on the app. But how does the business actually make money, especially because doctors are not charged for using or joining this community? Well, they've taken a three-pronged approach. The first is through marketing solutions. So life science and healthcare companies can use the company's platform to market their goods and services to doctors. Second is via hiring. Huge health centers and organizations can use Use Doximity to help recruit and hire physicians to their staff. The third is through productivity tools such as telehealth. Customers can pay Doximity to have access to those special features. Now, what's truly incredible here is that the company's net revenue retention rate is 171%, meaning they not only hold on to their existing customers, but they get them to spend 70% more a year later. What's equally impressive is just how little this company has had to spend on sales and marketing in order to attract new users to its platform. The company has become the de facto standard in the healthcare industry, and for that reason, it doesn't have to spend huge on sales and marketing. And because people need to go to the doctor, no matter the economic conditions, we consider this a recession-proof business. More importantly, investors should be excited by the fact that the vast majority of this company's revenue is recurring in nature. Turning to the company's moat, we think the network effect here is very high. Why? Because there are so many U.S. physicians, over 80% of them on the platform, that anyone who's not is incentivized to join to be a part of the conversation. The same can be said for the top hospital and healthcare systems in the United States and the top pharmaceutical manufacturers. They want to be advertising to the network where doctors are highly engaged, and as of right now, that platform is Doximity. When it comes to switching costs, we gave a medium rating here. While it's true that net revenue retention is above 170%, it's important to remember who Doximity's customers are, hospital organizations and big pharma. They do have other options when it comes to meeting their marketing and staffing needs. At the same time, it's also important to note that the number of those customers paying the company over $100,000 per year is growing rapidly. There's also an argument to me that the company benefits from low cost production and that it has so many physicians on its platform sharing information that it gives it access to low-cost data. However, this is a weak moat. Beyond that, you could make an argument that the company does benefit from some brand value. We didn't give them credit for that, but you add it all together and this is a company that has an expanding moat around it. Turning to the company's financials, we were very impressed with what we saw. Revenue growth has been high and it has compounded at a 78% rate over the last three years. And if you think that was good, look at gross margins, which are knocking on the door of 90%. If that wasn't impressive enough, how about the fact that this company is already generating huge amounts of net income and that net income is growing extremely rapidly. And free cash flow is growing rapidly as well as the company brought in over $100 million last year. The company's balance sheet is in absolute pristine shape with $142 million in cash and zero debt. And you add all that together and Doximity has very high returns on capital right now. Doximity was founded by three co-founders, two 
of which are still with the company today. Jeff Tangy, one of those three co-founders, is currently in the chief executive role. When it comes to Glassdoor ratings, employees seem to really like working on Dximity, giving the company 4.8 stars out of 5, and Jeff Tangy gets 93% approval rating. And when you add up the ownership by the co-founders and other insiders, they have a 27% stake in Dximity, which is worth over $2 billion today. Turning to potential, we think that this company has demonstrated that it does have optionality in its bones and that it has already grown three organically growing businesses. Now, one knock against Doximity is that it doesn't have a lot of room to grow operating leverage with such high gross margins and profit margins today. However, management believes that its current addressable market opportunity is about $18 billion, of which it's only captured about 2%. One thing that is worth noting is that we don't think this company can expand internationally and it is just a U.S. story for now. And the vast majority of the company's growth has happened organically. So how is Doximity done for investors so far? The answer is not great. As of the time of this recording, this stock is down 12%. That is slightly behind the S&P 500. However, in its short life as a public company, it has done very well versus Wall Street expectations, exceeding them every time. And right now, the company is not focused on returning capital to shareholders at all, although it could be in the not-too-distant future, given how profitable this business is. So what are the risks to watch moving forward? One of the important ones is competition. We gave it a medium rating because there are lots of players that are focused on some aspects of the business. For instance, LinkedIn and Staffing Solutions, or Teladoc and the Telehealth Solutions for Doximity. But we couldn't find a player that's trying to do all the things under the same umbrella. Another risk to watch is there is some customer concentration issues. One customer customer currently accounts for more than 10% of total sales, but we expect this figure to fall over time as the business continues to grow. Beyond that, despite the stock not having performed very well, this is still a very expensive stock. Doximity is currently trading at about 26 times sales. While this figure is down considerably from its recent high, this is still an elevated number. If we look at the price to earnings ratio, it's at about 60. Same story here, down from its highs, but 60 is still a large multiple to be paying. We can look at the company's PE ratio because its earnings are actually real. And while it's lower than it was in the past, 60 times earnings is still expensive. It's the same story with the price to free cash flow ratio, currently trading at about 72 times. No matter what multiple figure you look at, the company's stock is currently very expensive, although this it seems to be a very high quality business. So what should investors be watching moving forward? Well, the first is that net revenue retention. And look, we don't expect it to stay above 170% forever, but we want to see it maintain healthy growth. Second, keep an eye on the company's margins. The company's gross margin, operating margin, and net margin are currently sky high. We want to see them remain elevated indefinitely. And finally, keep an eye on those free cash flows. The company is bringing in a lot of cash right now, and we want to see that figure continue to grow. So how did Doximity score on our investing checklist? The answer there is pretty darn well. On my quality system, it got an 82. So this is a high quality business, according to my framework. And on mine, it got a 10, which is solidly in the investable area, I was being a little bit of a curmudgeon and didn't give them full credit for the network effect or high switching costs. And I took a point off for concentration. All right, Brian, we made our public call. So let's hand it over to stockcar.io to hold ourselves accountable. I'm going to start in the anti-fragile portfolio, which is your thumbs up portfolio. I'm going to place a new order. The ticker symbol here is DOCS for Doximity. We're going to do a buy decision on today's date, which is Tuesday, April 26th. This is a $44 stock. So we're going to be buying 21 shares. And it got a score of a 10. Then we're going to head on over to my thumbs up portfolio and we're going to do the exact same thing. And while Brian does that, we want to remind folks that you can head on over to stockcar.io and view these portfolios for free at any time. You can also enter the Beat the Brian's contest where you pick five stocks that you think will do the best between now and the end of the year. If you beat us on a quarterly basis, you gain access to VIP access to stockcar.io. And if you're the overall winner, you get a thousand dollar prize at the end of the year. So there you go. We think that Doximity is a very high quality business that more investors should know about. What'd you think of this video? Did you like it? If so, give us the thumbs up and let us know in the comment section below. Brian's out.